Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I will be talking about Bluetooth technology. So what is Bluetooth exactly? Well, Bluetooth is a radio wave technology that is mainly designed to enable wireless communications over short distances. Some key benefits of Bluetooth technology are cable replacement, ease of file sharing, internet connectivity, and low-cost technology. Now, whenever Bluetooth devices come within range of one another, an electronic conversation, and let's not get into details, but an electronic conversation determines whether they have data to share or whether one needs to control the other. There is no need for the user to press any button or give any command. The electronic conversation occurs automatically and the devices form a network once the conversation has initiated. But there is a maximum range for which a connection will not be established. So what is this maximum range? Okay, so every Bluetooth device has a transmitter and a receiver. And the power of the device transmitter is the one that governs the range over which a Bluetooth device can operate. Now, Bluetooth devices fall under one of three classes. You have class 1, and they are the most powerful and can operate up to 100 meter. Class 2, they are the most common kind and operate up to 10 meter. And finally, class 3, they are the least powerful and don't go much beyond 1 meter. There are devices that can vary their transmit power. So they can operate at different classes. So their transmit power is adaptable. All right, let's see how Bluetooth works. Well, first, let's talk about network topologies in Bluetooth. There are two types of network topologies the piconet and the scatternet. A single piconet is formed by one master and one slave. A multiple piconet is formed by one master and multiple slaves. Now, a master is the device which initiates communication with other devices and it dictates when a slave device may transmit. Also, direct slave to slave communication is not possible. There are or there can be a maximum of seven active slaves in the piconet, which means only eight maximum devices, including the master, can communicate at any one time in a piconet. A scatternet is a combination of multiple piconets. One thing to mention here about scatternet is that a master in one piconet can be a slave in another piconet. So you have here an example of this uh, device, Bluetooth device, uh, it's in gray. Well, it is a master for these two slaves, but it is a slave for this master in the other piconet. Like any other wireless technology, Bluetooth technology use a spectrum or a frequency band that the device used to communicate. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, Bluetooth spectrum. The Bluetooth devices exchange data in ISM band, that is the industrial, scientific, and medical band. The spectrum used by Bluetooth starts from 2402 MHz and ends at 2483.5 MHz, and it consists of 79 channels, having 1 MHz bandwidth in each channel. Now, why I'm mentioning this? Well, because Bluetooth devices use a technique called frequency hopping. In this technique, the transmitter hops from one channel to another in a pseudo-random fashion, determined by the master, and makes 1600 hops every second. Let me clarify this a little bit more. Let's consider the case of a smartphone transmitting a file to a computer. With frequency hopping, the data, meaning the file, will be transmitted in small pieces called packets. The first packet will be sent on a randomly selected channel, let's say channel 56. The next 
data packet will use a different channel also randomly selected let's say channel 4 for instance and the process continue in this fashion till all packets are transmitted as I mentioned before there are 1600 frequency hops in every second which means every 625 microsecond a packet will be sent on a different frequency so what is the benefit of this well the benefits of frequency hopping is to minimize eavesdropping so it would be very difficult for a hacker to get into the network where frequencies are being changed every 625 microseconds and also it would minimize interference from other networks that use the ISM band it's not just Bluetooth that use the ISM band but also a Wi-Fi use ISM band the uh, cordless phone use ISM band so that's it for my Bluetooth video I hope you liked it there is a lot to say about Bluetooth so I hope to see you in my next video and thanks again for watching